Okay, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, aka the Top Notch Gamer, aka Gaber Biglia, aka the Top Notch Gamer. And you are listening to Let's Gay Final Fantasy VI. Today on the show, my guest is Pokemon trainer, GIF maker, animator, Nikki Rojo. Hello. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. How has your weekend been? We're both suffering from Amazon not delivering Pokemon yeah. games to us, new Pokemon games. How dare they? It's very frustrating. It's it's adding to my desire to to boycott Amazon. Yes. Along with their business ties to Donald Trump, they can't even deliver Pokemon the day it comes out. Shame. So what uh, version did you end up getting? A uh, moon version. I got sun version. So we will uh-huh. have some things to trade, yes. hopefully. Uh, I think I'm the only person I know who got sun. I think it's something about moon sounds much more mysterious and appealing. Yeah. I would I would think to a lot of people. <laughs> I but, don't know, that bat guy in the front looks pretty cool. <laughs> the bat guy is cool. What's the, do you know the bat guy? I don't know anyone's names. I can't I remember. I don't either. I can't remember any of the new Pokemon's names for this generation. Yeah, not at all. I don't know, man. I feel like... I feel like the just everything that's going on right now, I can't even get that excited for Pokemon. Oh, yeah. That's when you know things are bad. Yeah. <laughs> when I can't, when me, the Pokemon guy, <laughs> cannot get excited for Pokemon. The Pokemon guy. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe not. But, <laughs> but we met through Pokemon. Yeah, that's true. You guys, you... I'm trying to remember, I think it was... Yeah, you you were um, in the second round of CalArts Pokemon League stuff. I didn't even think the first the first po- tournament we did. I didn't even think there was anyone else, any other grown people at CalArts <laughs> playing Pokemon, uh, besides my three or four friends that I knew who were doing it. Because I thought it was so funny that we were grown people <laughs> playing Pokemon. Now I realize it's completely normal. Yes. <laughs> and I think Brooke came to the first one wanting to play and so then sh- through her we got to meet all you animation department pokemon trainers yay oh yeah animation is full of pokemon trainers it's very true and also <laughs> you guys obliterated us at every turn that's the other <laughs> thing i remember is you guys were so much better at playing pokemon than we because the art department we were all like super into like the aesthetics of pokemon <laughs> like in these really funny ways like i would only I don't remember. Like, I would only t- really train Pokemon that, like, represented animals that I'd volunteered with. And then my boyfriend at the time would only use Steel-type. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> my friend John, he would only do, um, like, Pokemon that looked like minimal abstract art. <laughs> and so you and Rickety just came in and killed us. It was amazing. I have to confess, um, I... I'm also very into the aesthetics of Pokemon and will try to build a team of, like, my absolute favorites. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. But I've definitely, yeah, I, I had a short um, stint, I guess, in the competitive scene. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, I even, oh man, this is, like, really weird to talk about. But I actually made, like, a... Uh, an online forum <laughs> for competitive play, uh, inviting people from like Smogon, uh, oh, yeah. and from, uh, oh, well, I can't Cerebi? remember. Um, yes, definitely people from oh, Cerebi. Cerebi. Yeah. Um, yeah, some pretty prominent people from both those places showed up. <laughs> Now, for those uh, listening who might not know, Smogon and Cerebi are both websites for people who are in what you might call the Pokemon metagame, yes. uh, the uh, sort of a next tier level of play that Nikki was. And so, where did you, uh, where did you guys uh, meet up, or wh- where was the? Did you go to any tournaments? I did. Um, at first, it was all like online. I just like really wanted to talk to people about uh pokemon i guess and uh just really get into the competitive stuff i don't know nothing wrong with that yeah (laughs) 
And, uh, yeah, yeah, when I, like, like, started talking to people and, like, just when, like, the forum was starting, that's, like, when we started making real actual tournaments, because I was also, at the same time, uh, in competitive melee, so I felt like, oh, like, I know... Smash Brothers. Yeah, Smash Brothers. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, so I know how to, like do a tournament let's do this let's mm-hmm. like organize some pokemon tournaments so yeah that happened for a little bit and then i got too scared and then stopped <laughs> too scared what were, what was that about <laughs> oh those guys are so intense like, oh so intense yeah they are like they take the competitive like meta game to like a whole new level and mm-hmm. like yeah scared me out of my pants <laughs> Uh, it, uh, it, it gets pretty, it's amazing how rich, once you start going down that path, you realize how, in, how complicated Pokemon is, you know, people oh, yeah. don't realize that it's a really very rich, uh, game, really good gameplay, but oh, yeah. sometimes people go way too nuts. Where were you doing that? Where, like, where, what were the, what was the venue? Um, shoot, like, I remember we were at, uh... This mall in like Santa Monica, and I think yeah we were able to yeah it was like the Serebi guys that mostly organized the, like getting the venue. Mm-hmm. Um, shoot, yeah, this was a really long time ago. Um, when was it? That's what that's very interesting to me too. What year was it? Oh, probably like two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So before before you were doing the Cal Arts. Uh, Pokemon League stuff. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why you were just obliterating us because you were, you were the only person, and maybe Rickety, you had any relationship oh, yeah. to to the competitive scene, and we were just completely like I think I knew what Smogon was at that point, but I was kind of just like I think I did actually by that point. But um, I like to do tournaments that are, like, weird, like, oh, everyone has to pick a type, and they have to have all Pokemon of that type, you know? Mm-hmm. Things that make it harder to know <laughs> who's going to be the best person to use. Yeah. <laughs> person. I just refer to a Pokemon as a person. <laughs> um, but, uh, that, uh, that is, that's what's fun for me. So, Nikki, where did you grow up? Uh, mostly, like, San Diego, Southern California, um... I even, I did go to preschool in Mexico, where most of my family is. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, mostly, mostly here, uh, around the, all around these parts. The Los Angeles area. Mm-hmm. And so how has Los Angeles changed since, uh, you were a kid? Uh, I, so I was born in LA, and I think we moved, like, when I was maybe four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Um... It's a little hard to remember. It's all fuzzy, but uh, um, I think we lived in Long Beach. Uh huh. And uh, I actually remember more of Mexico. I think. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was very little uh, when I lived in LA. So I yeah. Uh, but I have I've heard stories like right now I live in Echo Park, and like I <laughs> uh, my dad would tell me like how. <laughs> awful and much how much of a dump it was like when he was echo park there. yeah <laughs> like it and you still live in echo park oh no i mean i just moved there like what like a couple of years sure, ago. sure sure yeah um but yeah like back when he was like in a young adult he sure. was in echo park and like yeah apparently like the park wasn't really a park it was more like a dump and like mud pile i guess sure uh yeah very uh not pleasant to live in now is very pleasant to live in thankfully it is pleasant to live in uh (laughs) but there's also you know changes to the community that come with that right oh definitely um yeah it's it's weird because like a lot of artists are there now which is cool um and uh what's also really cool like oh uh one of my friend's grandparents has lived there for like 50 years sure like she you know she owns a house there uh and she just like rents out to younger people who need a place 
And I'm like, that's great, you know, people who like, you know, the the original like community is like still, it's still around. Yeah, Echo Park, it's less extreme than say uh, Silver Lake in terms of the sort of shifting uh, demographic, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think people are holding on as much as they can. The question is though, how do we, I mean, this is getting into a serious topic, but <laughs> playing is. Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> But I just, I just want to, I just am trying to figure out ways, because I started going, I went to the town council meeting here for Lincoln Heights, mm -hmm. uh, having just moved, I went uh, on Thursday, and I just am, I really want to know how you can revitalize a community without, or, or um, have development in a community without uh, pushing out people who can't afford a, a raising rent price, you know? Yeah, I think about that a lot because, you know, friends, family friends, you know, I, I, you know, people like who, you know, who live there forever, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't want to see them suffer. No. Um, yeah. And, uh, so, so like I said, I've been thinking about it a lot and I think a, a pretty good, Thing to do is to try to support the local businesses that have been there yep yeah just like doing that as most as you can um is really helpful i think yeah even uh when i was in chinatown my big thing was going to the iowa supermarket there because uh, it wasn't a chain supermarket and it was you know obviously employing people in the the community and all that stuff mm -hmm. and just you know, uh, as opposed to going to like say Trader Joe's all the way in Eagle Rock for my groceries, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's a big question. I don't know if we're gonna answer it on this uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy VI playthrough today. Um, uh, what else has been going on? You work at Giphy. I do. Uh, explain to everyone what that is for people who might not know. Okay. Um. So, um, Giphy. For the most part, resides in New York, mm -hmm. but here in LA uh, is Giphy Studios, which is in charge of making original content and uh, gifting uh, current. When you create gifts at Giphy, that's yes. that's the main the main gig. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. I like. So my role there is I'm an artist there, um, mm -hmm. creating. You know, things like stickers that people can share, uh, topical things that um, people might be looking for, uh, you know, that maybe, like, right now, like, we're trying to cheer people up <laughs> yeah. while trying not to be super political. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, as a company, it's it's a little weird to take a stance. But, like, personally, yeah, like, I, I love... Uh, trying to help cheer people up uh, as much as possible with uh, these dark times. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, do your gifts? Because I know people can also generate their own gifts and add them to Giphy, right? Uh, or no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can totally upload all your own gifts, uh, anything you want um, for people to look at. Uh, there's plenty of artists, yeah, that are, that are contributing, and it's really, really cool. Now, here's my question. Is there a, um, is there any, uh, copyright infringement issues that ever come up with um, Giphy, or is it, are we sort of in a post, post that moment a little bit when it comes to distributing images? Because I, I see on Giphy, like, you know, stuff from TV shows and, and... Yeah. Celebrities and anime shows and everything. Um, I am not an attorney, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I do ask that question like to myself. I haven't really asked anybody about that. Sure. Um, but um, the things that we capture, like televised events, like we have video video editors who like uh -huh. that's like their job to like capture like televised events or like things that are happening and make them gifts. For people mm -hmm. and those those are through like permission yeah. of like those networks sure um definitely but yeah i mean i haven't really seen an issue with people uploading things from the copyrighted content sure it's probably the whole like millennium act you know <laughs> sure uh whatever the information 
stuff is. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. I don't even know where we are with all that stuff because the internet is just always rapidly evolving. Yeah. So what are some of the the gifts that you've been making lately? What are some of the what are some of the moments that we've been capturing? Um, well, uh, right now I actually <laughs> um I I uh didn't do any current event stuff. I just finished doing um, a thing called like an artist week mm -hmm. that we do over there um, where like all the artists there, which is like five, six of us. <laughs> okay. Um, we uh, each, you know, sometimes we get a week to just do whatever we want and uh -huh. just like um, put them out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I made a series of gifts as me uh of me costumed as a flower cute <laughs> and i'm just like kind of running around a park doing like whatever i want <laughs> and uh, it was super fun so yeah it's like a bunch of it's just a bunch of little gifts fun gifts that uh kind of i guess showcase that character <laughs> sure yeah sounds great yeah now uh before you worked at Giphy, you of course went to CalArts in the animation department. What are some other uh, jobs that you found yourself in and animators and people with animation degrees find themselves in? Um, there's lots of freelance getting passed around, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I personally have been jumping around a bunch of small studios. Um, I worked at Fox ADHD. I worked at Hot House, which makes Mr. Pickles. And it doesn't make porn, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yes, just so everyone That's a different Hot House. <laughs> different Hot House productions. And I've also worked at Shadow Machine, um, which has been really crazy, because they used to do mostly stop motion, and they have a bunch of really fun stuff to look at. Uh, fun sets and uh, puppets, and things like that. So that was cool. Yeah, all those places have been really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you learn a lot. Now what, because I never, it would never have dawned on me to become an animator uh, when I was in high school. How did you in high school even conceive of that as a possible career path? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I think I just always knew I wanted to draw for a living. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't even know it could be like a really like an actual career I sure. guess like I, I I kind of assumed oh yeah I'm gonna be drawing and I'm also probably gonna have like some other job on the side um but no yeah that is like not the case at all like the world needs art especially now I think um but yeah like I I, I even went to like community college getting like my GEs uh-huh uh, I didn't even know about Cal Arts until I was like there sure <laughs> one of my classmates was planning on going and uh yeah and uh, that's the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> but it's, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, the CalArts, sorry, my dog is shedding all over the place <laughs> No, here. it's okay. <laughs> the CalArts Animation de Department is, uh, very competitive to get into, am I correct? Yes. <laughs> so, so did you know that going in, and what kind of stuff was in your portfolio that you submitted? Um, so yeah, it was very, very competitive. I, um, so they like seeing a lot of life drawings. Right. Uh, a lot of things that you're thinking about, definitely, mm -hmm. uh, I think is what they're generally looking for. Um, and uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I actually didn't get in the first time. Sure. A lot of people don't. It's right. It's pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I kept trying. I got in the second time. Um, which was awesome. I had to like wait a whole year, but you know, like, right. I updated my portfolio with more stuff and all of that. And, uh, yeah. I think that's, I think that's important for people to know that if you don't get into a school on the first time, you should try again. If yes. It means that much to you because they will, I think also, I think schools notice that and see that you really, you know, want to be a member of the community. Yes, definitely. Oh, okay, now we're fighting a dragon. Ooh. Let's see how that goes. I think it's going to go fine because my guys are pretty beefed up right now. <laughs> oh, no. One of them's dead. Oh. Let's do an arise. 
I like that the dragon is not in the... Oh, it's, it's very briefly mentioned here. Uh, what about... Do we have any protect spells or anything like that? Okay, yeah. Oh, geez, this, this dragon. All right. Let's, um, <laughs> let's cast Ultima on this guy. And, uh... Let's do his little... And, uh, let's cast Juraga on our guys. <laughs> and, um, let's go from there. The next thing to do is... But I think this is one of the last dragons I even have to, to, uh... To fight here. Oh, dang. Which is good. Which is a good thing. Um, For me, though, I love seeing dragons. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever see that movie Reign of Fire? I didn't. I, you know, I've caught clips, but no, yeah, I didn't see that movie. Uh, that movie, yeah, I think that I'd have to rewatch it again, but my memory of it was like, because people didn't really even know that it happened, and it was pretty good. I think it was, I think Reign of Fire might have been a little underrated. <laughs> uh, dragon apocalypse movie. Yes. But who was it? It was a really. F who was the female character? I know it was Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale. <laughs> um, but I don't remember who the the lady was. Uh, yeah. Two dragons remaining. I think the two are in the on the way up to Ooh. the final boss. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so yeah. So what were we talking about? Portfolios. Yes. Yeah, my friend Sal, she submitted to the department. Her portfolio was um, all, uh, she worked at a, uh, she was a waitress at a strip club. Whoa. And so she was, all of her life drawing was strippers. And so she got in, I think, based off of that, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, oh, the drawing strippers is amazing. Because uh, there's a lot of different move, positions and contortions and everything. Yeah. Oh. They're very athletic. It's just such an awesome thing to watch. <laughs> Have you ever done that? No, I wish. I am not athletic at all. <laughs> no, not stripping. Drawing the, stri drawing the strippers. I thought you meant like pole dancing. Like, there's a lot of people that have been picking up pole dancing. Yes, it's a, it's very uh, it's good for exercise as well. Yeah, I definitely. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, but what did you mean? <laughs> uh, have you ever have you ever drawn uh, strippers? I have. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, so I, yeah, I went to like all the life drawing workshops that I could get into. Uh, I, there was, there was one, uh, in San Diego, uh, outside of, uh, community college. I went to Palomar, which uh, if like anyone is in San Diego and looking for a good community college, that is an amazing place for mm -hmm. art. Yeah. Um, yeah, the art department is just, anyway, yeah, I learned a lot of things there and, um, Anyway, so I went into another workshop outside of school, and like occasionally, and uh, yeah, uh, sometimes they brought in strippers. Wow. Yeah. And that was that was it was outside of school though. Yes. That's really cool. Yeah, it was great. Because I mean, that would be really progressive if they had strippers in the school. Yeah. That would be pretty wild. Uh, and um. And uh, did you have a thesis uh, film that you got to make at CalArts? Is um, that part of what what the is that part of the program over there? You make a film for right when you graduate. You make a short little animated piece. It's actually a film every single year. Oh wow! <laughs> Which I I didn't know about either until I actually got in. Yeah. <laughs> Much to the surprise of my classmates, because a lot of people that get into the animation program like. I feel like know everything about the program. Right. I did not. Yeah. It seemed like you were a little more, even though you t had to take a year, you seemed a little more casual than some of the people I see that go in yeah. to the program. Um, which, I mean, I don't, like, it's not to say that I take uh, my, like, animation or art uh, right, right, right. casually. But right. yeah, yeah, it's, it was a totally different kind of perspective. Um, where people like knew like all like these names and I was just like wowed by all the knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you make a film every single year. Um, and obviously it's like a huge, uh, it bumps up like your, not only like your time management, but like <laughs> your knowledge of like what goes into making uh, any film. And, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. And what were some of those films about? Um, the first one I made uh, a character that is trying to make 
I think uh, she was making like um, she wanted to fly like really bad and um, she finds I think I made made her find like a some sort of blueprints or like she kind of figured out how to make like a flying machine or tried uh -huh. to make a, a flying machine yeah and it like totally failed and i had like a bird character who couldn't fly watching her doing it and was like like messed up about it <laughs> the bird couldn't fly yeah the bird couldn't fly either so yeah like uh, but like yeah this character was like super bitter and like the one main character was like you know really inspired to like try to make an actual flying machine sure yeah sounds um, pretty cute thanks <laughs> um the second one <laughs> the second one is a uh a, i called it apocalypse brothers yeah um it's about like you know the um i don't know not i don't know if a lot of people know about like the the apocalypse story in the bible <laughs> in the book of revelations yes um and how it talks about like these horsemen um like famine and and war and disease and all this crazy stuff uh i mean there is a lot of other really <laughs> crazy shit in there yeah but uh <laughs> but it, yeah it's ma mainly based on that uh on the horsemen uh, I made characters that embodied famine and uh, war. Sure. Uh, and shoot, I forgot the other. <laughs> it's so long ago. Sounds um, like a very epic. What was the, was there music to, for the piece? Yeah. Um, so yeah, also, that's another thing. Uh, every year that you're making a film, it's you know you're encouraged to like reach out to the other schools. Like the the acting school to the music school to um, help you out on your film, you know, sure. and like they get to, you know, show off their stuff too, and it's really really cool. Um, everyone's like collaborating and and making cool things. Uh, so I yeah I approached my friend Tomio to make the music for my second film, and he like totally killed it. He's like an awesome producer. Sure. Electronic producer. And <laughs> like, yeah, he's like kicking ass right now too. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Um let's see. Oh yeah. So the second that Apocalypse Brothers thing that I had mm -hmm. I had four characters. The fourth one I made like this cutesy unicorn that's supposed to be one of them. But like is obviously not scary at all. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, like, you know, he tries to fit in with his brothers and, like, he can't. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's just not, not badass enough. Uh, and, um, it's kind of, I don't know, I tried to make it, like, a, a film about, like, hey, you know, you don't have to, like, be a certain way to, like, uh, be accepted. Sure. Yeah. It's <laughs> a great message. Thanks. <laughs> um, and then, oh, yeah, um, this is getting into, like, more of my favorite stuff. I loved making my third film. Uh, I called it Killer's Kiss. Yeah. I made it into a musical. Wow. So my characters are singing. Wow. <laughs> that was really fun. Um, I worked with my friend... Uh, I worked with a lot of friends actually um, and it's basically about um, let's see how do I say this it's based in ancient Greece okay but it's like mythology Greece sure so, like Not all the really monsters Greece, yeah yeah all the monsters and things are there so the main characters are a bunch of harpy sisters um, Actually, I don't really remember if they're actual sisters, but anyway, um, they're all, you know, banded together on this, like, island, you know, trying to get dudes to, like, um, yeah, I kind of mixed them up with, like, si sirens, too, so they're, like, singing, yeah, um, like sirens would, but they're harpies, they're, like, bird ladies, um, and they get a ship to come to them, 
And they're like, yeah, you know, our next meal's coming. And uh, one of them ends up falling in love with one of the sailors. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, lots, lots of great actors in there, and um, two music friends. Um, yeah, they were amazing. I, I all their all their credits are on my Vimeo. <laughs> um, I highly suggest people look at them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sounds like a great group. Yeah. All right, can you do me a huge favor and read me this little this little bit of text right? Right there, Mage Master. Ma Mage Master. This boss, like many others, has the ability to change its weaknesses and strengths at will, making it almost impossible for you to keep up. The solution is to use non-elemental magic, like Ultima. This is pretty much all you need to know, except for the most important thing, of course. The boss has a final attack that wipes the entire battlefield, okay. causing an instant game over. All right. Well, that's um, important to know. Yeah. Unless, of course, someone has had the Life 3 spell cast on them to be revived when they die. All right. We're, we're doing get into that right now. Yeah. It's apparently the only way to survive. Re-raise. That's what we're doing here. And then, uh, let's see if we can get into this. Heal all my guys. Um, but, yeah. So, I think they're all going to be... Okay, as I'm casting re-raise on all of them. That's my that's my plan. Let's Dang, see. this guy looks cool. Yeah, he's him. like a he's like a pirate, a zombie pirate. <laughs> I guess. I don't know, it's maybe Frankenstein. Sort of just like a I don't know. They the once you get really deep with the later Final Fantasy bosses, they're sort of abstract in this, this kind of general way that's what we were talking about how a lot of before the show we were talking about how a lot of these um these these final fantasy bosses end up uh like intellectualizing you right at the end <laughs> yeah and what's that all about i don't really know <laughs> throwing philosophy at you <laughs> yeah did you uh did you have to take uh any philosophy classes when you were at cal arts um, I took some, because I guess, even though I transferred a bunch of community college credits, sure. uh, I had to take, like, at least 12 units for, sure. um, like, a, I don't know, general ed residency, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I took, I took a bunch of really cool stuff. I took feminist and queer theory. Uh-huh. I took, um bunch of literature classes um what else oh i took a zine making class that was great that sounds cool yeah it was really awesome uh i took screen screen printing <laughs> which was also awesome oh boy oh man my guys are starting to here let's see we'll do Suffering. this we'll do this and then we'll do we'll do what are we gonna do Kiraga on everybody. And we're gonna do that spell quick again. We're gonna get into that. No, oh, we're gonna oh. die. Oh, that was the biggest waste of a. Oh boy, this Dang. is all, this is getting bad already. Um, let's see here. We raise on that person. Okay, maybe not. This person is out of magic. So let's cast an elixir on them and get some of their magic back. Arise on this guy. Casting death. Silence. Well, that's <laughs> not good. All right. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, this guy is like. He's not joking around. No. <laughs> Quick. All right. Now we're just gonna hit him with all as much ultima as we can. That's my. That's my. My plan here. I'm sticking to it. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, quick. Oh, is Butters sleeping? Butters is asleep. <laughs> On your lap. He's oh, pretty cute. I just woke him up. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> That's all right. I can't keep. 
I can't keep track of the quick spell lets you cast two spells back to back, but now I can't keep track of who who Oh, oh we did it though. Look. Oh, oh See look, because we did we had the re raise cast nice. on everyone. Except yes. for maybe our friend Oh no, even she had it cast. <laughs> so we won. Oh. We did it. Heck yeah, you get all that sweet EXP too. We right? did, yes. yes. And we have now beat the horrible thing that was not as <laughs> not it was still hard. Yeah. There at the end. We were not talking about this interview. We were I was uh, <laughs> yeah, freaking you were. out that I was gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> um but here, let's see if we can warp out or, or any of that. Because if we have to walk back down through this, that could be that could be stressful. Let's see. I don't know where that spell teleport out of a dungeon about okay, we can't use teleport, so that's that's a little scary. But maybe what items do we do we have here to help ourselves? Well, here, let's just heal everyone. Um so what uh games have you been playing lately? Um oh uh, well, one Rocket League because that game's great. Um, but also what's that game? Rocket Tell League. Me. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, it's. Is it soccer with cars? Yes. <laughs> I've heard a lot of good things about that. Yeah. Game. <laughs> Souped up cars. Uh, kicking a giant ball around. It's great. Yep. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, like the. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think what I love about it is everyone's just, like, fumbling around trying to, like, do... Yeah, the physics are really weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you're just trying to get the aim right at this giant ball and, like... Uh, and it's it's hilarious. Like, people... You see people, like, go after this ball and, like, fumble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, everyone. You can, like, just at the middle of the game, like, you can see... Absolutely everyone on the field fumble over this ball. Yeah, it's a fantastic game. And now, what kind of, how, what kind of, are the cars just like ridiculous Mario Kart type cars? Or are they a little more realistic seeming than that? Oh, they're, I would say, they range from like, uh, <laughs> like, from like really cute go-karty type cars to like, uh, to like uh, what, what do you call them? Twisted like, Metal. Um, oh my god, that game. <laughs> I have not thought about Twisted Metal in a long time. Um, there are some trucks. They're not like, I mean, you can like put accessories on them, so the, yeah, they'll make them look a little more crazy. Uh, there's, there's also like, uh, longer cars. Yeah. Very Batmobile-y looking cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's a flavor of every car. There you go. In that game. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, you play that, where do you play that? On Steam? Mm-hmm. That's where it is. That's what I've heard. Yeah. What else have you been getting into? Um, Death Road to Canada. Oh, I'm, Death Road to Canada. Yes. What's that game? Where do, where do you get that game? Um, that's also on Steam. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it's a... A really cute game that it's a zombie game um, but I think it's not like uh, it's like basically a survival zombie game sure so you're in this like you're yeah you're on the road to Canada because apparently America is terrible and full of zombies okay and Canada is like your safe sure place they got it together <laughs> sounds familiar <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and uh, you're yeah, you're going from town to town, gathering supplies and like fighting zombies off, and you're just sure. trying to trying to get to Canada. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's very cute. I love the design. It's like very cute. Yeah, it's cute. It's a cute game. It's what a is, cute so game. the look is almost like a what? What's the look? It's a, it's like that pixely like eight bit look. Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, with some of the newer like effects and elements kind of mixed in. Sure. The music's really fun. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good time. I, uh, I'm going to have to check that one out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm planning on doing after I finish this game is start playing all new games on Steam because I feel like I'm such an old man when it comes to <laughs> games sometimes. Like, I mean, this game is over 20 years old. Uh, so <laughs> I need to stop relying on that nostalgia and, mm -hmm. and get into the, in the games of today. 
Yeah, there's a lot of great things that today has to offer. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I went to, I don't know if you've heard of this, but I went to this convention, Indicade. Have you heard of this? I have. It was a lot of fun, I oh, have to say. I wish I went. Oh my goodness. Um, there was a really cool game called, uh, what was it called? Earth Knight? Uh-huh. And it was a, it was a... It was a runner game, not an infinite runner though. Okay. And uh, you're running uh, on the backs of these dragons, sort of through outer space, and you <laughs> fall. You fall down. Once you finish one dragon, you fall down, and uh, and get to go um, like on the on the next dragon. But there's like a nice little like break part where you're just falling through space. Uh, and I don't know really how to describe it with that, but the art was really beautiful. Oh, wow. Like, dragons in space, like, I'm already sold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, oh. Have you been, uh, are you a convention goer? Would you say you like to go to conventions at all? Um, I do occasionally. Um, I'm thinking about starting a table. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What kind of stuff? Um, just... You know, general, like, stickers, uh, I want to definitely, like, I've been making a comic um, mm -hmm. that's been kind of at a standstill because my job situation is so, like, unstable. <laughs> it's like I'm jumping around everywhere, but, uh, sure. yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very dead set on making this comic um, called Jungle, and, um, yeah, eventually get it printed out. And, and what's going to be going on in, in there? Um... It's a, like, I'd say it's, like, a very sci-fi slash fantasy kind of genre. Sure. Yeah. Um, the main character is a uh, fugitive space pirate lady shapeshifter. There we go. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, and she's... Uh, She's been dumped on this jungle planet because that's, uh, in this story, in this universe, that's where all the felons, the really dangerous felons, get dumped at. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And she's just trying to survive. Sure. Trying to get off that planet, you know, learn a lot about her, and yeah. There you, there you have it. <laughs> well, uh, that sounds really good. I, uh, I'm thinking about maybe after I finish, I've got a book coming out soon, but after I finish that... I, uh, I'm thinking about doing a comics anthology. Um, the theme is uh, uh, Ganon loves Bowser, <laughs> or Bowser and Ganon in love. Yes. And uh, and uh, I would love if you would s to have you submit something. To oh, that. I be would be delighted. That's of any interest. <laughs> uh, so that's that's my because I I love I because I've never tabled at any convention or book fair or zine fair or anything mm -hmm. like that and I, for some reason i i really have been wanting to lately even though everyone i know who who does that always says they're so exhausted by it mm -hmm. it's it sounds really fun to me yeah Ooh, I'm, I'm super into it too like i would love to do it i'm burning through my, my elixirs right now <laughs> oh. i hope i can make it to the bottom of this this dang hill here. <laughs> so it seems like we're doing good. We've gotten through a couple little shelves here without encountering any bad guys. Is this it? Did we make it? Did we, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be... I'm thinking also um, about maybe going to grad school for some... for There's an experimental publishing program. And, I don't know. I really want to get in comics, I think, is another, another thing that I... Heck yeah. Uh, so, Jungle, have you ever submitted or, or been part of any uh, little comics projects? Um, I have submitted to a couple zines. Sure. Yeah. Um, definitely would love to submit to more. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. And what were those? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, my bud, Faye Orlov, made... She she does like well I don't know if she still does it but she used to publish or maybe she still does um I think it's called like fuck the media sure yeah and uh, sounds good to me <laughs> yeah and she asked me to submit some art in there and I was like yeah of course 
Um, the media really dropped the ball on this election. That's what I'll say about oh, that. Oh, boy, did it. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on with the media right now. It's, I know. No one can trust anything anymore. I can only trust science fiction. I can only trust... Uh, <laughs> Trust the predictions for the future that appear in that have appeared in science fiction oh, so yeah. many times, so prophetically. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but I, uh, I, uh, you know, I feel like there was such a such a uh, plethora of sort of post-apocalyptic material in the uh, '90s and early 2000s, and uh, that worries me. <laughs> it's disconcerting to me. Yeah, like, it kind of, like, I've, I've been wondering, you know, if, if people are predicting, you know, so to speak, like, things that are happening 20, 40, 50 years from now, like, would those things have actually happened? Or, like, um, or, you know, are they just, like, so in tune with society? And I think it could be both, maybe. <laughs> I mean, the most insane in prediction that sort of came out of science fiction was the internet uh and cyberpunk stuff right like yeah. william gibson and and neil stevenson books where they you know you know talk about basically oh we made it thank god uh, <laughs> little guy jumping <laughs> i almost want to know why that little guy is jumping but i also just want to get the out of there <laughs> yeah okay now that i'm out of there we can go back and i can find out why that little guy was jumping that's what i that's my next question why is the little guy jumping <laughs> he says treasure treasure wow that treasure, was treasure. not satisfying at all. <laughs> that was completely disappointing very um ten a hundred thousand gil uh sure why not <laughs> there's an ancient cast oh i already did all this great that was the biggest waste of money i've ever done <laughs> oh well what are you gonna do Dang. Wait, so you just paid that guy? I paid him 100,000 gil. I'm now down to uh, <laughs> and still an obscene amount of gil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm clearly the richest person in this world, I bet. <laughs> a well, millionaire. <laughs> well, uh, Nikki, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank and getting me through me. that getting me through that tower. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was still... Still a little scary there. Yeah, a little, you know, there was sweating a little bit. There were some harrowing points. Yeah. Uh, is there anything coming up that you want to plug or let people know about? Um, I mean, just... Uh, How can we see your gifts on Giphy? Is there any way to know it's you? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, please visit um, Giphy.com slash Giphy Studios, I believe. Um, yep. Or just uh, up at the top bar, you can see uh, work from other artists. But Giphy Studios will have what we are making in-house. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, my friends are amazing, amazing artists um, in there. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. Sounds great. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on the show. This has been Let's Gay. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts. Keep uh, tuning in. We're uploading every week. And... Uh, pray for me so we can have the final episode of Let's Get Final Fantasy VI as a big art show. I want to project. Uh, I want to project the last episode onto a wall that's uh, sort of like a drawing mural of fan art that people come and make of Final Fantasy. That's my dream. Uh, Good but, dream. But uh, sort of low, low, uh, not low brow, but low. Uh, like newsprint and sumi ink is the material, so it won't look super polished. Mm. <coughs> oh, bless oh you. excuse me. I think I have a little tickle in my sinuses today. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show, Nikki. Thank you so much for having me, Johnny.